Right. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> so this is a, a small supplement video for the Placencia reading that we've already uh, done a lecture on. So I'm not going to lecture on all of the material here, but rather I want to call attention to this formulation of Placencia's argument in this essay. So um, so I, I don't think that the, the formulation is very good from the, from the full PowerPoint. So I think that this one is a little bit better. Okay, so first of all, first premise, premise one, il, the terms illegal immigrant and undocumented immigrant focus on individual wrongness, right? So we, you heard about this in the lecture, right? These terms put responsibility on the individual, right? You have done something illegal. You could have gotten your documentation, but due to your own negligence, you did not get your own documentation, right? So these terms put responsibility and they put the focus on individual wrongness, right? So if terms focus on individual wrongness, then the individual ought to be in the wrong, right? So uh, for instance, consider our terms criminal and suspect, right? So we use the term suspect before we have enough evidence to conclude that somebody is a criminal, right? We, we never say the criminal is at large, you know, unless they're like, say, uh, escaped from prison, right? So we always say the suspect is at large because we suspect that they may have something to do with the crime, right? So uh, if we have a mere suspicion that somebody has done a crime versus then when we have the full out evidence that they have in fact done the crime, then we can call them a criminal, right? Okay. So, so we use the term criminal when we want to assign blame and we're certain about that blame. We use the term suspect when we're suspicious about whether or not to, to assign blame, right? And if we use the term criminal to talk about somebody that we're merely suspicious of, well, then that would bias us when we're trying to assess this person's case. Okay, so the idea here is that if a term is focused on individual wrongness, then the individual ought to be actually, in fact, in the wrong. So uh, illegal immigrants and undocumented immigrants, this is an empirical claim, positively participate in the economy, which the government has historically let slide, right? So for instance, um, uh, illegal and undocumented immigrants, they don't pay uh, uh, income taxes, but they pay a lot in sales tax, right? And they, they actually contribute quite a lot to our tax revenue in virtue of contributing to sales tax, right? So the idea here is that um, uh, uh, these folks are positively participating in the economy. The other thing is that they're doing jobs, right? That, that the goods that they produce from those jobs is actually pretty cheap, right? Uh, so for instance, picking fruits and vegetables and crops, right? We get salads for a lower cost because illegal and undocumented immigrants were paid lower wages than uh, like a fair worker, right? Than a, a worker who has like the full status of being a worker, right? So the idea here is that we all benefit from their tax revenue we all benefit from the reduced cost in different things. Okay, so premise four, positively participating in the economy is not wrong since we all benefit from the practice, right? Cheap salads, like I've been saying, right? So we're all benefiting from their presence here. So therefore, we should use terms that do not pass moral judgment off the bat, right? So we should use informally authorized and, and formally authorized, right? Those terms um, put more focus on the institutional structures that sort of incentivize this whole uh, uh, system that's happening, right? This whole practice. Okay. So this is, I think, a better formulation of the argument from this essay 
than the argument uh, in the video. So, so uh, watch this video. Of course, you already have because you're to this point. But um, this argument formulation may show up on quizzes or on the exam. Thank you all.